Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video we're going through the Sydney vs Fremantle game in which Fremantle just picked Sydney by a single 0.99 to 98 and it was a really good watch. I mean even as a Swans fan yes we did uh, not get up in the end but the fair play to Fremantle they stopped the big sort of three that was all the talk and I think that showed that they are, well I did rate them but um, showed that they are up there in terms of we all talk about um carlton collingwood sydney etc even to a certain extent um essendon but Fremantle are just as much in this race and yeah if they can provide that type of performance more times than not they're gonna go deep into the finals um and yeah this one's i think it was a whole team down effort i know that um that's probably putting a little bit too much shade on Fremantle. i think the swans could have definitely played better i know they're big three they got effectively tagged, but I think the whole team was just a little bit dumbed down. And I think it was one of those games that, um, you know, you're not too... They, they shouldn't be too disappointed that they uh, dropped it because you kind of need those wake-up calls that it's a full-team effort and a full-team buy-in. And I don't think the Swans um, had that with their uh, two-way running. And you sort of saw Fremantle just absolutely capitalise on transition. And that's sort of what Sydney's bread and butter has been. And it just wasn't there compared to... Uh, compared to Fremantle, but anyway, before we jump into this video, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into this recap. So, Nick Blakey was the highest scorer in the game with a 1-2-1, the only 100 scorer, and it just shows how um, how bad this uh, fancy round was, or this fancy game, sorry, was. 20, 30, 29, 42, he was basically the only one that the Swans could look at, um, in the sort of second half or anything for drive he was there was not nothing from molly foreign uh golden warner and heaney sort of went a little bit missing um there was only sort of one or two plays in the third where they really were like i'm here to play um other than that there was just nothing from those three uh brody grundy had a tough day in the ruck as you always would against the double uh double monster of luke jackson and also Sam, uh sean darcy uh, yeah, so Nick Blakey was the only one that they looked off off half back, as Florent had a pretty poor game as well off half back. Hayden McLean, 91, he's not going to be fancy relevant, but he was clunking every mark that he had a chance to, or he was getting a free kick for a tug of the arm. McInerney started off really strong, and he's going to be one of, up there in the Bob Skilton, even though he's not one of the big uh, big names, just because he is ultra consistent. Another, I think it was 19 or 27 marks and a goal or something or other like that, and really did all his work in the first half, kept the Swans sort of in it. Um, but then second half, he did go away a little bit in the last, and isn't fantasy relevant, but he had a huge game. Taylor Adams, he consistently is doing this. He's consistently getting 20 touches, a couple of four or five uh, tackles, four or five marks, it seems like. That is sort of his bread and butter. And he done it yet again, yet he's somehow in the, especially in one circles, he's one that's being pointed out. And I just don't think that that's uh, fair, to be honest. I think he put up his pretty consistent game. Let me just bring up his, uh, on my phone, his actual uh, game by game, so just see if he's um, if it was out of the ordinary or anything. It doesn't feel like it was out of the ordinary, to be honest. Um, so he had he's had 17, 18, 17, 18, 13, 20, 11, 23, 22, 22, 19 touches. So it's not really out of the ordinary. He's had um, 4, 3, 4, 4, 2, 2, 5, 1, 2, 5, 4. So he's really getting about 4 marks a game and I would say that's roughly four to five uh tap probably five tackles a game he's played how many games one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven games for 36 marks which is just over three a game and 46 tackles which is just over four a game and he ended up with four marks six tackles and yeah he he, he was pretty good I mean his disposal efficiency was a little bit off but other than that he was pretty uh, stock standard for Taylor Adams. Brody Grundy was a little bit off, and I think this just um, caused to show the weakness that uh, we didn't get. Uh, we got smacked up in the centre, I believe. Does it have clearances up here or anything? Uh, doesn't have clearances. I can bring up the clearance numbers, uh, but yeah, we just got I'm pretty sure smacked in that area. Yeah, clearances forty two to thirty two, and centre clearances we actually won fifteen fourteen, but stoppage clearances, which is what the Swans really do thrive on, they were down twenty eight to seventeen. So. Yeah, I think um, Brody just had a 
pretty cool game. Ended up having a sore shoulder alongside um, Heaney and Warnall, so I have sore shoulders at the moment, so just not the best look. Gordon really didn't got nullified by O'Meara on the wing. Uh, 43 in the last quarter as he basically just went to half back um, and tried that, and it seemed to sort of work to a certain degree. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's just sort of a bad game from Gordon, to be honest. Warner, 81. This is what you sort of expect from Warner, to be honest. Uh, 7 in the first, 25, 22, 27. He's going to have games like this where he just doesn't um, score particularly well. He's an impact player. He's never going to be really that fancy relevant because he's an impact player that can get, um, I wouldn't say necessarily tagged out of the game, but he's never really going to put up the big non-disposal numbers like four tack uh, like five marks, five tackles regularly. Um, so I don't think he even averages anywhere close to that. Let me actually look at his numbers for you. As he's played, he's played all 15 games, but he averages, let me just check here. He averages four marks and four tackles a game, as a matter of fact, which is up there. But it's not, he doesn't also average, um, he only averages like 24 touches as well. So he's not up there at the 28 to 30 touch mark or the five, six tackles, five, six mark, um, five, six tackles, five, six marks uh, level, which really does generate a lot of um, points. So he's sort of just iffy on both ends of the floor, and that's why, or both ends of disposal and non-disposals, and that's why he doesn't average too, too much. Isaac Heaney, he really just had a slow first half, got into it in the third, and then the fourth quarter slowed down a little bit again, so he's just going through a rough patch at the moment, as I think some teams are starting to figure out how to um, how to sort of just monitor him. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting watch that. Haywood, 78, row bottom. Um, Haywood came alive in the third quarter, and I think his uh, first two quarters epitomized why uh, what the Swans need out of a draft. Um, he went down with an injury, and the offense just completely ground to a halt because there was no marking targets other than the tours. There was no medium target, so they could basically just run another uh, sort of just a guy... Uh, almost just flood those, uh, the, the tools for the swans and it just didn't really help. Um, so yeah, it shows that they kind of need another marking target there if Will Hayward does actually end up injured because they have no one backing up there. Uh, which could lead to potentially even guys like, I don't know, Harvey Langford, um, Day Wicks and Trevor Liga are the guys that they're sort of looking at. Um, I probably butchered one of their names, but even though those guys can play midfield, if they do come to the Swans, I wouldn't uh, doubt it if they play the high half forward marking role. Um, and that would be sort of a watch for fancy if that does happen. Robottom, Campbell, Papley, Florent, McCartan, none of these guys really matter at all. Yeah, none of those really matter. And Cle Cleary is just getting his um, his uh, his average down, which is going to be good next year when he now he's now at... um. What's an average of 17? So that'll be below the uh, threshold for basement. So he'll be at basement price, which is a good thing. Sharp, 98. Of course, trade him out for a 98. The two guys that I trade out go 98 and 109. Sounds about right. Um, I knew this was coming and just, yeah, he just got just got time and space on the wing um, because they tried to basically just not get it to uh, Gordon's wing. They tried everything to just kick it to the other side. Uh, Ryan with the 97, he's still pretty good, um, but he'll just start really dropping in cash, which will be good in the last couple of weeks just to be able to flip to him. Sarong, 96. Wagner, 94. They really just kicked it between the those sort of smaller guys. Clark in 87. He got off the tag in the last quarter as they brought it to sort of Sarong. They also um, went to... Um, who else did they go to? They brought in... They used a tag on someone else. Um, they definitely put a tag on Sarong and some other guys in the um, for Fremantle. And yeah, Clark got off the leash and just started getting a lot of ball. Brayshaw, Jackson, Draper, uh, 73. He was absolutely huge in the last quarter, taking a lot of contested grabs and basically stopping Logan McDonald. Amos, Fife did a really good lockdown role on uh, on Heaney, which I didn't think was necessarily possible, um, given that Fife is a little bit past it, but he really just impacted the game. Oh, we have stats here. That's actually good. Um, okay, that's that's good. Darcy here, uh, he ended up 
pretty much dominating the ruck with 35 hitouts to the likes of, where is it here? Where is he? Grundy here. Grundy had 28. O'Meara, Sturt, Tracy, Walker, Frederick, Chapman, no one else here really matters except for Hayden Young, who had 17 touches, one mark, three free kicks against, probably didn't help because if he doesn't get caught holding the ball three times, he gets three more kicks away, and that's an 18-point swing, which a 55 is still pathetic, but it's not as bad. I do think he was running with um, almost with Warner and Heaney. There was a there was a lot of run with rolls, and I think it did open up the the thought of um, can can you triple tag Sydney almost to a certain extent? They tagged um, they tagged the likes of Gordon. They tagged Heaney. I, I think Hayden Young went to Warner to a certain extent, and um, yeah, that just didn't um, didn't help, and I think that was the one of the ways that they um, they capitalized, I guess. So yeah, Hayden Young. I thought about taking him out or whatnot. Um, thought about Sinclair, but I'm like Hayden Young. He's really had just one poor game. If he does turn into the tagger one more week, then I will look at um, trading him out. But I do still need to fix up the last sort of rookie spot that I've got at the moment, which is. Not in the sort of greatest um, position, not going to lie. Having a rookie on field is not um, the best. But anyway, we move uh, forwards. Hayden Young, yeah, just 37. And he'll he'll be back next week, I suspect. I just don't like it in the if he gets another sort of tagging roll or run with roll. As you see here, that third quarter really did kill him off. He was on 31 at halftime, and you thought, oh, that, that'll be decent. But a four-point... Um, Minus four point third quarter was annoying. If he gets a twenty pointer there and he ends up on like a sixty one or a seventy one, it's not the end of the world. But a thirty seven really was a killer. But anyway, that pretty much is the video there going through the Sydney versus Fremantle game. And I guess I will catch you guys in the next recap or whatever the four thirty the Collingwood's uh, Gold Coast game, and then you will also have one of the seven thirty games uh, today as well in another recap. So I'll see you in those ones. Bye guys.